Hello, this is Dr. Me at the Actual Academy, and we are going to review Bayes' theorem and the law of total probability. So I put together a separate video just to cover these concepts because they're foundational for many of the problems that you will need to solve on the actuarial exam. So I have an example here that we're going to work out in a moment. But first, let's look at the law of total probability and all its wonder and glory is written as follows. So we have n mutually exclusive and exhaustive events. And so when we say mutually exclusive, what we're saying is their pairwise intersection is empty. So there's no overlapping here. Okay, I'm going to draw a picture in a moment. And also they're exhaustive in that it covers the entire sample space. So basically the union of all these events is equal to all possible outcomes and they're all mutually exclusive. Then for any other event B it can be decomposed into the sum of conditional probabilities probability of B given A1 has occurred times the probability of A1 plus the probability of B given A2 times the probability of A2 all the way down to the probability of B given A sub N has occurred times the probability of A sub N. So in terms of a Venn diagram Okay, we have our sample space, and these events here, A1 through AN, basically partition or cut up our sample space. And I'm just going to use an example where N is equal to 4. So we really have four mutually exclusive and exhaustive events here. And you can see that they do not overlap, so they're mutually exclusive and they're exhaustive. They cover the entire sample space. And now we have another event, say B, for which we want to compute its probability. What this is saying is, is that we can write probability of B, so if we need to compute it, we can condition on, that's a term I'm introducing now, other events that are involved in the problem. And again, we'll, we'll look at an example here in a moment to actually solidify that. So this would be the probability of B given A1 has occurred, times the probability of A1, and so forth. So this is a very, very powerful tool in that when you do want to compute the probability of an event you can condition it on another event occurring and so you literally break computing the probability of B down into smaller pieces one way to interpret this is probability of B is equal to the probability of B given A1 has occurred okay so this is what makes it more simple given A1 has occurred at least according to this Venn diagram we see that B could not have occurred okay because B is not in A1. So this would actually equal 0 from the diagram here, plus then the probability of B given A2 has occurred. So given A2 has occurred, what's the probability of B has occurred, and so forth, so forth. So we can interpret this as the probability of B is the weighted average, and we're averaging it by the weights probability A1, A2, A3, A4. So it's the weighted average of the conditional probability of B given the occurrence of A sub I. Now let's actually work out an example here. We have a silly little problem here. I have a pencil supplier, A, B, and C, and unfortunately they deliver sometimes defective pencils. I go through a lot of pencils here doing my videos, and from pencil supplier A, 10% are defective. From B, 5% are defective, and from supplier C, 15% are defective. Now percentage of shipments received from A are 36 times and from B 60 receiving a shipment percent. from A and then from C I received 4 percent. So let's let D equal to defective. So if I want to compute the probability of D then here's a good example where we can actually condition on another event and we're going to condition on the shipments received. So here this is can be broken down into the probability of D given A, that is that we actually received it from A, plus the probability of D given we received the shipment from B, times the probability that we received it from B, plus the probability of it being defective given C, that it came from supplier C times the probability of C, and this is equal to, so before we actually solve this, uh, let's make sure events A, B, and C actually satisfy that they're mutually exclusive. So we can't, a pencil can't come from two different suppliers. 
So yes, they are mutually exclusive, and they're exhaustive. We're either going to receive it from supplier A, B, or C, and we notice that this is 100%. Okay, so we can now condition on these events. So the probability that it's defective, given it came from A, is 10%. So we'll write that as 0 0.10 times the probability it actually came from A, that's 0.36. Plus, probability it's defective, given that it came from B, is 5%, times the probability it actually came from B, that's 60%, plus the probability it was defective coming from C, and that's 15%, and 4% come from here, which is equal to 0 0.072. So roughly 7% would be defective. So you can see how this conditioning using the law of total probability is very, very powerful. Okay, now that we've covered the law of total probability, let's take a look at Bayes' theorem. Makes more sense to cover the law of total probability before Bayes' theorem. In Bayes' theorem, what we do is we turn things around. Instead of looking for the probability of, say in this case, a defective, we look for the probability that it came from a certain supplier given that it was defected. So for example, we could ask the question, what's the probability that the defective pencil came from supplier A given that it was defective. Okay, so this is really what Bayes' theorem seeks to look for. So when you're given a Bayes' theorem type problem, you're given the reverse of this, the probability of something happening given one of the mutually exclusive events, or in this case, the probability that it was defective given it came from supplier A, or probability is defective given it came from supplier B, and so forth. But here, again, we turn it around. We say, what's the probability it came from supplier A, B, or C given it was defective. So if we look at our Venn diagram, we're actually given that B, okay, in our case that's actually D, occurred. And then we asked the probability of one of these events actually having occurred. So in terms of the Venn diagram here, we could say given that B has occurred, what's the probability that A2 has occurred? B has occurred, what's the probability that A4 has occurred? So we're really looking for the pieces inside of here. From the Venn diagram, given that B has occurred, what's the probability A1 has occurred, we can immediately see here that that's actually zero. And so I'm going to run out of room here, so I'm going to continue working this problem here. And what we're going to look for is exactly what I wrote down, is we're going to look for the probability of A given D. The probability, well given that a pencil is defective, what's the probability it came from supplier A? Okay, and we're going to work this out very carefully, and this is actually Bayes' theorem. It's the probability, and we really use conditional probability, of A and D divided by the probability of D. Now, note that we've already solved this piece here. We've already done all the work here. But that would actually be involved in Bayes' theorem in that we would have to do all the work required in order to get the probability of D, but of course we've already done that. So, I'm going to rewrite this in an equivalent way, not really changing anything, but I'm going to put probability D and A, and you'll see why in a moment, just to make it really clear, divided by the probability of D. Now watch how we we can re-represent the numerator here. We know from the laws of probability, basically conditional probability, that this can be rewritten as probability of D given A. And now we know that, and that's exactly why I wrote it that way times the probability of A. See, we know these pieces divided by the probability of D. So that's really the best kept secret of Bayes' theorem, is really the step here, is that we rewrite this back into the form that we know. And that way we can actually compute the probability of A given D. Again, see, these are reversed. And so that's just equal to, if you remember from the previous, excuse me, from the previous page, 0 0.036 times 0.36 all divided by 0 0.072. Again, that's was computed in the previous page. So there was actually some work required to get this piece here. That you probably, in a given problem, would have to do all in one step. And that's equal to 0 0.18. So that's the probability of, given that you have a defective item, that it came from supplier A. And you could do a similar computation for probability of A, excuse me, probability of B given D, and probability of C given D. So that concludes this example here. I would like to do an additional example uh, to just reinforce this concept of Bayes' theorem, and we'll do the entire problem applying Bayes' theorem. 
So this is a multiple choice test problem where the student knows the answer or guesses. And we'll let P equal the actual probability that the student knows the answer. And of course, the probability that the student does not know the answer is just a complement of that, and that's 1 minus P. And we also suppose that there are M choices per question. So the question is, what's the probability the student knew the answer given he or she actually answered it correctly? So let's define some events here first. Let's define C as answers question correctly. And we'll define K as the event knows the answer. So given the problem statement, we can already fill in some, some details here. One of the items that we can already determine is the probability that the student answers the question correctly given they know the answer. Okay, this is this is trivial, right? That's one. Okay. We assume that the student, if he knows the answer, or he or she will answer the question correctly. Likewise, the probability that the student answers the question correctly given he or she does not know the answer, okay, and that's actually K complement, it's a complement of this. Then we assume that the student's going to guess. So there are M questions, or excuse me, M choices per question. So just by guessing, the probability of getting the right answer is just 1 over M. And another piece of information that we know is the probability that the student knows the answer. That's equal to P. That was given to us. So likewise, the probability of K complement then, do not know the answer, is just equal to 1 minus P. So the desired probability then is the probability that the student knew the answer given he or she answered it correctly. Now, you can see here, this is again the reverse of what's given here. Here the statement is the probability that the student answers correctly given knows the answer, or probability a student answers correctly without knowing the answer. So here we're reversing that. Again, that's Bayes' theorem. What's the probability that the student knows the answer given it was answered correctly? And so I'm going to run out of room here, so I need to go to the next page to continue to work this, and I will reproduce that. So again, the desired probability is the probability of K given C, and this is where we use Bayes' theorem. That's equal to the probability of knows the answer and answers it correctly, and you saw this from the previous example, divided by the probability answers correctly. And this is equal to, and we're going to break this up into terms that we know, it's the probability of C given K times the probability of K. And we understand where this piece comes from, right? Because again, you can rewrite this as probability of C intersect K. That's probably the way you're used to seeing this rule applied. And now you can say that the numerator there is equal to the probability of C given K times the probability of K, all divided by the probability of C. And now we're going to break this up. This numerator, we actually know the pieces to that, but I won't fill them in yet. Come over here and put the equal sign. And I'm going to break up the denominator and use the law of total probability. In doing so, we're actually going to condition on whether or not the student knows the answer. So usually in Bayes' theorem, it's very clear what you need to condition on to and also identify those events that are mutually exclusive but exhaustive. So here we only have two. And those and those events are just whether or not the student knows the answer. Pretty simple. But still powerful. And so in math lingo, math notation, it looks like that. Now it's just a matter of filling in the, the data. So the probability of C given K answers correctly given he knows the answer is just 1 times the probability he knows the answer is P all divided by and this piece here you'll see is identical to this so that's still just 1 times P 
plus the probability answers correctly given does not know the answer that's just 1 over m times the probability does not know the answer and that's 1 minus p and if you simplify this if you like sometimes on the actual exam things are simplified so you have to be good with algebra here it turns out to equal this a little cleaner m times p divided by 1 plus m minus 1 times p and that's actually the the final answer so let's just take this one step further and put some numbers in there if there were actually say four responses or four choices per question and the probability that a student actually knew the answer to that question was 0.9 then you could actually numerically compute the probability that the student actually knew the answer to that question if it was answered correctly would be if you fill that in and you can do the details there is 3.6 divided by 3.7 which is approximately equal to 0 0.973 so a high probability that if they answered it correctly they actually knew it okay so that's it for Bayes theorem and the law of total probability thank you very much